My family moved to Columbus, Georgia when I was a teenager. I was already an avid golfer and I started to hear the name of Fred Haskins. He had been the head pro here at the Country Club of Columbus and he had taught people the finer points in the game of golf. Mr. Haskins, uh, having been born in the late 1800s, uh, got his education and uh, picked up on his golfing skills while living in Hoy Lake, England. He was the youngest of four brothers in the family. He played golf on the uh, Royal Liverpool Golf Course, which was there in Hoy Lake, and the Haskins Sports Shop was right there. I can remember uh, many references that he made to having attended golf school. No doubt uh, the golf school involves learning such skills as uh, club making, golf instructional uh, techniques, as well as uh, golf course maintenance. This was uh, made by Mr. Haskins. You can see his name on the back, Fred Haskins, and it's got my daddy's initials, w WBR, on the back. And he had a set in his brothers and sisters. And when I started playing, I played with, with, those, with these clubs. It was with those skills that he brought to this country that he demonstrated again in Atlanta through, uh, by working as assistant to Stuart Maiden. At uh, one time, having made a set of clubs for Bobby Jones. There was no doubt that personalized letter that Stuart Maiden typed and signed that uh, helped to land Fred the job here in Columbus. Fred Haskins grew up in Hoylake, the cradle of amateur play, and the course where Bobby Jones won the 1930 British Open. He stopped off at East Lake on his way here and shared the wonderful old game with generations of boys and girls. He wanted their swing to be natural, and he wanted them to think. He instilled values and principles. He shared old school fundamentals, but more than anything, he taught them how to win at golf and at life. He did talk to us about things other than uh, just the golf itself, but he was trying to teach us the real purpose of golf as far as he was concerned, and that was that you were to be a gentleman on the golf course as well as uh, being honest on the golf course. He was a, a, a unique person, a, a very special person, uh, not just as a teacher, but one that uh, would set high standards for everyone would expect you to live up to those standards. He, his emphasis was on us and not himself. That was the impression that I had. He was a second daddy to me. I kind of uh, put him on the same level as I did my preacher. I always looked up to him. and He was such a fine gentleman. and He always had on a cap or a hat. He had that little dapper mustache. and He was just somebody that I kind of idolized. I think he loved people. I think he loved what he was doing. And he shared, he shared his talent. He just, he was open and just gave everything he had. This golf course was his classroom. The teachings came on Saturday morning and lessons never cost more than a dime. My first memory of Mr. Haskins was Saturday morning golf lessons, free lessons. You brought 10 cents to pay the kid to pick up the balls, but the lessons were free. And we were, oh, six or seven years old when we started that. Through the course of uh, a number of lessons, uh, a lot of those balls got lost. So it was to the uh, individual's advantage to be there first. If you got there first, you started out with 21 golf balls, but if you were down five, 10 uh, in, in order, and by the time you got to hit your balls, about half of them were gone because we would, we would hit them from one side to the other when we first got started. Everybody that came with a dime, they were welcomed and, and taught. And we all had 20 golf balls and we got to tee them up and hit them out there. And, and then he'd send you right out on the golf course right after your, after your lesson. It was hard to win our club tournament. And we had a team from the Columbus Country Club entered in the all the team competition, which was at the state tournament, the southeastern tournament, and the southern amateur. And we won it every year, and it wasn't the same four players. But it was a result of players being really good because of those Saturday morning lessons. He taught us well, he encouraged us, he was a psychologist. 
He would tell us each that we were the best player in the South, and we later found out he told everybody that, but he had us believing it. There was no accident that, that we were able to win these championships. Back then, there were uh, no tournaments for girls, but Mr. Haskins always let us play in the boys' tournaments. And I don't know, I don't, the boys did not like that, but anyway, Mr. Haskins let us play. Now, Mr. Haskins was a great photographer, and he took this, this is when I'm at one of his clinics, and I think this was taken about 1942. He saw great value in, uh, in photography, not uh, the video as we know it today, but uh, uh, essentially the same thing for, for his era. I have a picture of the old club that he used on a Christmas card one year. He would take pictures of maybe uh, your individual swing, and the next thing you knew, you'd get a, your family would get a Christmas card with, uh, with your, your swing on it. Fred Haskins' pupils won tournaments and captained college teams all over the South. They're champions, and behind every champion is a teacher. Uh, success started back uh, at a very early stage when we saw his students winning collegiate championships, being team captains of uh, collegiate championships, and that sort of became a traditional thing. I went to LSU uh, on a golf scholarship, and uh, I was not the first of Fred Haskins' students to do that. Sonny Ellis from Columbus preceded me my second year there. We were able to put a team together uh, and was successful in bringing the NCAA uh, championship back home. Some of those people have uh, gone on with golfing careers. Uh, I, I did not. I, I chose the Air Force uh, to make a career out of. I wanted to fly. One of Mr. Haskins' most accomplished students was George Hamer. In one year, I believe it was, he won the uh, Georgia State Amateur, the Southern Amateur, the All-American Championship in Chicago, and I believe it might have been that same year that he won the NCAA uh, Championship. And it was that type of play and accomplishment that earned him a a, a spot on the 1946 Walker Cup team, then later played uh, two years as an amateur in the, uh, in the Masters event. It's a moving testimony to the game of golf that teachers create such important moments in a person's life. My goal is to one day be a teacher, so um, I obviously think it's really important, you know, to be able to not only share your knowledge, but to learn, obviously, the, the best way to learn to play golf. I encourage every junior I talk to actually to go to college and be part of a team which is so much fun but also just to learn so much about your game and, and uh, hopefully get your, get your name on that trophy one day. Football had the Heisman, basketball had the Naismith, but in 1970 college golf had no comparable award. This concerned a group of Columbus businessmen who came up with a way to honor the nation's most outstanding college golfer. But what would they call the award? Nelson Walt Ross came to my office one day and says, Lanny Watkins has just won the Dixie Intercollegiate up at Callaway Gardens. And we need to get an, an award to the best college player in the United States. And it ought to be named after uh, the golf professional who, whose life was given to teaching people to play golf. And, who could we name this for? And immediately I said, Fred Haskins. And that originated the Fred Haskins Award. I didn't know Mr. Haskins that well, but I knew he helped a lot of people. And uh, I think it's uh, evidence that we had people in the game like that, that just, you know, they, they don't ask for remuneration. They want to, to introduce golf to people and keep them in it. And, uh, it's pretty rare people. I think it was a huge honor for me, and uh, I know it was part of uh, what I got in the Hall of Fame at USC, actually, for all, all their sports things. They talked about the Haskins of being the player of the year and uh, how much that meant. You know, I remember when I was at Furman, I always looked at the All-American plaques from previous years, and uh, there was first, second, and third team, and the Haskins guy was always on that first team. The past winners were always guys that made it out onto the PGA Tour. And, to be able to win the College Player of the Year, there was no better feeling. I still can't believe that I did it. I mean, it, it 
mean, that's the best player in the country for a year. That's, that's remarkable, and especially when you see the names that are on here and what, they're, that, what they've done. You know, any time that you can be selected by your peers or coaches as the you know, best player for that particular year, uh, it's something you always remember. It was neat because there's been a lot of guys at Oklahoma State who have also won it, so to be selected was, was a great achievement. To be able to put your name on something like this is, is extra special. I, I'll always remember it. I mean, it's the player of the year. And uh, again, I was, I was so young, I didn't know what I'd done. It's nice looking back on it some years later and know you're a part of this. I mean, of Sam, too. Scotty V, yeah. Billy Mayfair, Estes. What kind of advice would I give to uh, uh, Haskins' winner would be to cherish the award and uh, keep it at the uh, front of your scrapbook because it's, uh, it's a great, great uh, honor to be even nominated, much less to win one. His pupils were champions, and so were the college players who won the award that bears his name. Behind every champion is a teacher, and one of those teachers was Fred Haskins.